Hi everyone. In the last video, we created this data store session handler. And with the help of this session handler, we will store the user information in our local storage. In this example, we are going to save the user ID and the authentication key. And with the help of this authentication key, we will identify whether a user is already logged in or not in our application. So let's see how we can achieve this thing. The first thing that I will do is I will go to my login use case and here I will get one more dependency. Here you can see I'm getting repository and mapper and I want one more thing that is private val session handler and the type would be session handler. Now I am not able to get session handler here because I have to add the storage module in my dependencies block. So what I will do is I will go to the build.gradle file for this auth module. So this is that build.gradle file and here I will add storage. So I will write implementation projects storage. Now I need to sync the project. Now let's go back to login use case and here you can see now I am able to import session handler and it is from storage module. Now I am not getting it as a dependency. As you can see, this icon is not for session handler. So what we need to do is we need to define a provides function that will provide session handler to our login use case. And we will do it inside network module. So open network module that we already created. And here we will define one more provides. Now here we will get our data store session handler that we already created. Let me minimize the emulator. So we have data store session handler and we will return session handler. And we can simply return data store session handler. That is the implementation of session handler. Now this will provide the session handler to our login use case. Now once we have a login success, we will save the auth key and the user ID to local storage with the help of the session handler. So inside the case network result dot success, we will save the user ID and authentication token. And to do this, we will use the session handler. So we have session handler dot set current user and we will set result dot result dot data dot id and the same way we will get auth token now this line will store the id and the token to our proto data store and now we can check if the user is already logged in or not inside our splash screen but before going to splash screen let's go to our http client so i will open minitales http client builder and here you can see we have load tokens and refresh tokens and here we are passing empty strings but now we need to get the token from session handler so again we need to get the session handler as a dependency for our minitales http client builder so first we need to add the storage module to our network module and to do this go to build.gradle file and here add implementation projects dot storage now sync it and again go to minitales http client builder and here we can write private val session handler now with the help of session handler we can get the auth token and to do this go to this bearer block and right now I am not using refresh tokens so I can simply remove this block and here I can just provide the access token and I can pass an empty string for refresh token but remember in real cases you also have refresh tokens that you need to store and pass but right now our backend API do not provides us refresh token that's why I am passing the empty string here. So what I will do here is 
I will write a run blocking. And inside run blocking, I will pass access token. So we have session handler dot get current user dot first not filter but first and from the first value I will get auth key and I will pass empty string for refresh token. Now our HTTP client builder is ready. It will provide token if we have a token in our local storage. So what we will do is we will check the local storage for authentication token. If we have an authentication token there, we will retrieve the token and we will call an API to confirm that this token is valid. And to do this, we need to call the login API. So I have called the login API here and this is the working token. Now I need to verify by calling another API whether this token is valid or not. So first I will make one more get request and for this request the end point is user. Now I will pass the authorization header this time and for bearer token I will pass this value that I got from the login API. Make sure your backend project is running. In my case it is running. So I will send the get request and I am getting information. If I pass a wrong auth key, then in this case, I will get invalid authentication token. So this is how I am going to verify whether the token is valid or not. And we need to integrate this API in our project. So let's come back to our Android project. And here we will define one more repository and this time it is user repository. So let's go to data module of auth module. So inside auth we have data. So here we will define one more repository and it is user repository. So we have user repository. It is an interface. Inside this interface I will define suspend fun user and it will return network result of type response of type user API model. Now let's define an implementation. Now to this implementation we will provide request handler. So we have request handler and we will make it a constructor injection. So we have inject constructor and we are getting request handler. Now inside the function user we will call the user API. So here we will write request handler dot get and for URL path segments we will pass list of and our endpoint that is user. Now we can simply return the result and we have the user API call. So we have the repository ready. Now we will define a use case to consume this repository. So let's go to this module that is our domain module and here we will create one more Kotlin file and we will name it user data use case. Again we will make it a constructor injection and to this use case we need repository that is user repository and we also need mapper. Now here we will define the function invoke and this is the strategy for the use case that we have to follow. Inside every use case, we will define a function named invoke. So we have our invoke function that will return user that is a resource. And here we will write when. So we can simply write return when and we will get the result and we will call the user from the repository. Now let's add remaining branches. So if it is an error, we will return result dot resource error and if it is a success we will return resource dot success and we will map the result to this user class so we will write mapper we already have the mapper here as you can see mapper dot map and we will map the result dot result dot data now we have the use case ready that we can use to identify whether a user is logged in or not.
now here you can see we are not getting this user repository as a dependency because this icon is not here so let's go to login use case and here you can see we are getting this auth repository from here from the auth module so inside this module only i can define one more provides now if you go back to user data use case you can see we have this icon here that means now we are getting all the required dependencies now let's go to splash screen so inside auth we have main and here we have login and splash and now for splash we will define splash view model so we have splash view model we will create a hilt view model and constructor injection we need the use case here and it is our user data use case now inside the splash view model we need a ui state for our splash so first define a sealed class and we will name it splash ui state now inside this ui state class we have authenticated this means we will navigate to the home screen and we have splash that means we will show the splash screen now let's go back to splash view model we will define a ui state using mutable state flow now when we will initialize this splash view model we will check whether the user is logged in or not so let's define this function is logged in and we will use a view model scope and i forget to inherit the view model to this class so this is a view model that's why we have to write view model here and now we can use the view model scope and inside this view model scope that is a coroutine scope we can update the ui state so we will write ui state dot value equals to splash ui state dot splash and i will mark the is loading to true that means now we are sending the request and checking whether the user is logged in or not meanwhile display the progress bar now we will check when splash use case dot invoke and we will check if the resource is success so in case of error we will update the ui state so in case of error we will write ui state dot value equals to splash ui state dot splash and when the user is not logged in we will mark move to login to true and in case of success we will update the ui state and we will set it to authenticated that means the user is already logged in go to home screen now let's go to splash composable and here to our splash screen composable first we will provide some dependencies the first one is view model that is splash view model then we have nav controller and finally we have on auth success so we will call this function when the login is successful or the user is already logged in now we will get the ui state from view model so we have ui state equals to view model dot ui state and we will collect it now we will check when val state equals to ui state dot value and here we will generate remaining branches so we have two cases when the user is authenticated we will call on auth success but this function should get called only once and to prevent this function from getting called multiple times in case of recomposition i will use launched effect so we will write launched effect we will pass a key so let's pass unit and inside this launched effect we will call on auth success now in case of splash what we will do is we will check if state dot move to login if it is true we will move it to the login screen and else we will display splash so from splash screen either we will go to the authenticated screen or the login screen and when the api is being called we will display the progress bar or the logo or whatever you want to display in your splash screen so in case of move to login 
we will do the same thing we will use the launched effect to navigate finally when the api is being called we will display the splash screen so i think it is fine now so let's go back to our auth nav graph and here we need to provide view model and other dependencies so for view model we can pass hilt view model for nav controller we will pass nav controller because we already have the nav controller here and for on auth success we can pass this on auth success that we have here so we have on auth success like this now let's check the calling place of this auth nav graph so we are calling it here and in case of on auth success we are not doing anything so in case of success we need to navigate to the home screen that we have not yet created so we will do it in the next video for now let's check the application so let's run it and we are getting an error here because we passed session handler to our mini tails http client builder but here we are not providing the session handler so what we can do here is we can define the session handler here so we have session handler and because we are already getting session handler you can see we have this icon here we can pass the session handler like this now let's run the application again so you can see we have the splash screen and we went to login screen and this time we are not making any delay in our splash screen but we are checking whether the api is returning a user or not so let's check logcat and here you can see the api was called and we got the response invalid authentication token please log in again now if we log in let's log in so we have a login success and if i restart the application now you can see this time we call this api that is user and this time we got the value that means the function on auth success was called but right now we don't have any screen to go that's why we are seeing the login screen but we will do all these things in the next video for now i hope you found this video helpful and learned something if you need the source code then the link is given in the description of this video and don't forget to share this video with your friends thanks for watching this is bilal khan now signing off